Hello, hello everyone, Inquisitor Vaughn here, and in today's video, we are going to go into the Primark Project number three, who would later be designated as Fulgrim. So, in the list of correspondences, Primark Project number three, designated name would be Fulgrim. The aspect of humanity that they would embody is culture. The Legion specialization is excellence and the gene seed organ that I associate with the Primark project and their legion is the progenoid glands. Now I know I used that in the Dark Angels uh, video as well, but I'm going to explain to you why I used the progenoid glands and associate the progenoid glands with the third Primark project as well. Let's get into it. Primark project number three's gestation pod would land on the world of Chemos, which was a low resource mining world. It was the Primarch's beauty which saved him from an attempted murder in such a bleak environment as Chemos, and the population took the Primarch project in as one of their own. They named it Fulgrim, which was one of the names of the Chemosian gods. Fulgrim worked in the factories of Chemos for most of his early life, gaining leadership positions amongst the Chemosian people, like most Primark projects would. When the Emperor discovered Primark Project Number 3, it is said that upon seeing the Emperor, before anything was even said, Fulgrim fell to his knees and declared his loyalty to the Emperor and the growing Imperium of Man. He was given command of his legion, the Third Legion, which was actually amongst the smallest legions at the time. Only 200 Astartes of the legion were left after events that had occurred previously to the reuniting of Primarch and Legion. The aspect of humanity that Primarch Project Number 3 embodied is, in my opinion, culture. Culture is defined as the arts, intellectual achievement, and specific traditions and expressions of a human group, whether that be a country, a state, or in the case of Warhammer 40k, a planet. Culture is perhaps the highest expression of human individuality in a collective sense, because a culture can define a people. If you want to understand why people do things, you have to understand the aspects of their culture. Primark Project Number 3 not only embodied that drive toward culture, but also embodied the desire for culture at its most refined. Even on the bleak world of Chemos, Fulgrim was almost impulsively driven to transform the world into one of more refined culture, even though from his beginnings, he never witnessed anything of the sort to base this desire off of. When encountering the Emperor for the first time, he supplicated to him without any words being exchanged, just off the strength of the visual representation of the Emperor and his gleaming gold armor covered in intrinsic design. When Fulgrim learned of the culture of the Imperium's ideals, he was naturally driven to embody and express this in his visual presentation. His armor was always immaculate. He had a natural interest in the arts and in music. Not only this, but Fulgrim himself was beautiful. Long silvery white hair, wide eyes, a handsome facial structure. He was pleasant to gaze upon, and his aesthetics matched the reality as well. The Third Legion itself had its beginnings in the upper echelons of what societies existed on Terra during the Unification Wars. The first recruits for the Third Legion came from amongst the noble families of the Terran Houses of Europa, or Europe. One of the named houses was House Loculus of Camarg, who selected all of their male youth to give to the Emperor for induction into the Astartes legions. Other noble houses followed suit to the point that the initial recruits for the Third Legion were all of noble Terran bloodline. The Third Legion was odd in that they did not protest to serving besides or even leading the human forces of the growing Imperium like other legions did. The knowledge of their noble Terran heritage imbued within them a sense of natural leadership over the quote unquote lesser forces. It was perhaps due to this that they pushed themselves toward excellence in combat. With other legions such as that of the first, the cultures that the initial recruits came from on Terra were largely forgotten as they adopted their new identity as Astartes. Such was the case with the initial recruits for the Dark Angels Legion, with the only reference to previous culture being from the uncrowned princes who themselves created a culture of heroism and noble deed inspired by the old legends of Terra. 
the recruits of the Third Legion seemed to hold on to their past status as regular humans of noble class, and this may have been something that the Emperor actually allowed. It is rumored that the Emperor called the Legion the Emperor's Children way before it was officially declared when the Legion was reunited with their Primarch. In fact, the Emperor declared the Legion the Emperor's Children immediately after hearing Fulgrim address what remained of his Legion on Terra and allowed the Legion to wear the Palantine Aquila on their armor, the heraldic symbol of the Imperium itself. Clearly the Emperor had certain favoring toward the Third Legion, but it wasn't as if the Legion didn't earn those honors previously. In an assassination attempt on the Emperor on the world of Proxima, the Third Legion cohort that accompanied the Emperor fought and died to the last Marine to defend the Emperor and uphold the Palatine Aquila, the Emperor's personal standard, in the midst of the insurrection. It was due to the Third Legion that the Emperor survived the attack, and it was because of this that the Emperor bestowed the Palatine Aquila as the Third Legion's official heraldry. The purple color of their armor was adopted to represent their status, purple long having been associated with royalty and high status. The specialization of war that I assign to the Third Legion is the pursuit of excellence. I think most people would think that I'd assign the aspect of humanity as excellence or maybe perfection, but I don't think that would be accurate. If Project Number 3 embodied the pursuit of perfection, he would have been driven to change the Imperium instead of adopting it like he did because the Imperium was far from perfect. The pursuit of perfection was a specialization of war because it characterized the Legion before they ever met their Primarch. In the history of the wars that the Third Legion would fight alongside the human forces of the Emperor, they consistently achieved victory and exceeded the expectation of the Emperor because of the Third Legion's mastery of strategy and leadership. They served as a standard bearer to the Emperor, as diplomats and bodyguards for mortal leadership. They even even served as a voice of the Emperor because they never changed any message given to them to communicate with others, saying exactly what was said by the Emperor with the same tone, depth, and meaning. But they were still Astartes and made for war, so the perfection and excellence they strove for was specifically focused on war in all of its aspects, from fighting all the way to representing what it was that they were fighting for. It was an engineered gene seed blight that destroyed the majority of the Third Legion's gene seed and this led to a rapid decline in the Legion's numbers by the time they were reunited with Fulgrim. But by recruiting from both Terra and Chemos, the Legion's numbers swelled in size again. It was a combination of the inbuilt obsession with culture and the pursuit of perfection and excellence in war that eventually corrupted the Third Legion. It was the Third Legion who began to biologically modify their marines to gain advantage in battle through the use of sonic weaponry, initiated by the apothecary Fabius Bile who believed that he could improve upon the Emperor's design on Gene Seed itself. It was the culture of the Lair Serpentine Xeno species that was the instrument to Fulgrim's corruption at the hands of Slanesh, the Prince of Pleasure. The Third Legion would eventually become traitors to the Imperium of Man, and Fulgrim would eventually ascend to Demon Princehood of the Chaos Powers. The gene seed organ that I would correspond to the Third Legion and to the Third Primarch are, similar to the First Legion, the progenoid glands, the part of the gene seed responsible for the replication of the gene seed organs necessary to make an Astartes. I correspond the organ with the Emperor's children because one of the most prominent and devastating events in their history involved their gene seed, and their corruption as a legion involved it as well. Of course, the organ was already used in the First Legion's correspondence, but an Astartes is implanted with two of these organs. One is recovered after implantation of all the other organs is complete, and the other is recovered when the Astartes dies. The one recovered after implantation is complete, I correspond to the First Legion. The one that is recovered after Anastartes has died, I correspond to the Third Legion, 
because for a time the legion was defined by their inability to maintain their numbers in any other way beyond harvesting gene seed from their dead. Project number three, being the embodiment of culture, is also reinforced by the fact that in their legion's expression, the emperor's children almost completely adopted the Terran culture of the Imperium of Man. Unlike with many other legions, when you look at their armor and the designs on it, you'll see no traces or suggestions of Chemos or Chemosian culture. This is likely due to the fact that Chemos barely had a unique culture prior to the arrival of the third Primarch project, and barely had a unique one by the time the Emperor arrived. The human population on Chemos had been in a state of survival. They did not have time for arts and music and other higher forms of culture. Which is ironic that the Primark project embodying the aspect of culture would land on such a bleak world and change it for the better, in a direction that would lead eventually to promoting culture to some extent. It's also a perfect example of why I question if it was really the Chaos Gods that guided the project pods to the worlds on which they would land. As we've seen with the first Primark project and now the third project, the Primarchs seem to have landed where they were needed the most. Fulgrim changed the world of Kamos from a half-dead mining world to a beautiful, prosperous planet of high art and culture. The drive to do so was imbued within him, however the world he would transform Kamos into was not into anything that the world had ever seen before. He changed it into something that he saw within himself. And when the Emperor's ships landed on Kamos bearing the Imperial Aquila, it was said that Fulgrim began to remember it, even though he had never seen it before. Though the Third Legion would be known for their excellent skill in close combat, the specialization of excellence in war was less about their skill at any particular aspect of war and more about representation of excellence in a way that would imply that the Third Legion was the Emperor's herald and his representatives on the battlefield. Something to also think about is that the Third Legion recruits were mostly from the families of Terran nobility. The Custodes were also taken from amongst the specific population as well, and the Custodes could be said to have influenced the appearance of the Emperor's children, since no other force under the Emperor embodied the ideals of the Imperium of Man better than the Custodes. Details on the armor of the Emperor's children would reveal elements of the Emperor's armor design and the Custodes as well, such as the Aquila and the Roaring Man design. Even the halberds that the Emperor's children used were inspired by the Custodes' spears. The embodiment of culture by the Third Primarch Project and its eventual betrayal and fate are a good example of how everything that glitters isn't gold, how the heights of luxury and refined culture could hide flaws underneath their surface hidden behind beauty and grace. If the Imperium of Man had have been made into the image that Fulgrim had wanted it to be, it would have been weak and corrupted way before the 31st millennium, committed more to visual excellence rather than actual moral excellence. Perhaps like a scapegoat sent out into the desert, when Fulgrim fell, he saved the Imperium from that fate as a collective. But that's just my opinion. And with that being said, that is my dive into the Primark Project number three, designated Fulgrim of the Emperor's Children. Without anything else to say, Inquisitor Vaughn out. Remember, the Emperor protects and the future is successor.